السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على رسول الله. <coughs> so we begin our new series, an overview of the Quran, a little bit more in depth. And as we traverse through the Quran and as we begin to study the Quran, we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for ikhlas, for sincerity, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna al-a'mal bil-niyat." That verily the actions are based on their intentions. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to keep our intentions pure for His sake. Allahumma ameen. In this introduction, I want us to understand how to approach the Quran. And then inshallah we'll begin with the actual verses of the Quran as well. <coughs> So the Qur'an is a special book and there's certain things that we have to understand about the Qur'an. The Qur'an's purpose is to change our lives. It's not to be... The purpose of the Qur'an is not only to be recited or to only be memorized, but to impact and change our soul. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Qur'an and the weight of this revelation, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. That if the, this Quran was set down upon a mountain, you would have seen that mountain humbled and coming apart, falling apart out of the fear from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. And these are the examples that we present to the people that perhaps they will give thought. So that's the importance and the weight of the Qur'an. It should make us feel moved when we understand it and as we learn it and inshallah also apply it. The word Qur'an, when we talk about studying the Qur'an, the word Qur'an has two different meanings in the Arabic language. One is that it comes from the word Qara'a, which means to read or to recite. And the other opinion on about, about what the word Qur'an means is that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he says that the word Qur'an doesn't necessarily have a meaning, it's just a proper noun, like John or Michael or whatever. But it seems like the most popular opinion is that the word Qur'an means the thing, that which is recited often. The Qur'an, the technical definition of the word Qur'an, meaning not the way that the word is used in the Arabic language, but the way that the word is used in the Islamic sciences, is the Arabic speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in its exact wording and meaning, and which has been preserved in the Mus'haf, so therefore a translation would not suffice. And it has reached us by mutawatir, by numerous chains of transmission. And there is a challenge to mankind to produce something like it. <clears throat> the Arabic speech of Allah. These are the literal words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was real to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its word and its meaning. And it has been preserved in the mushaf. And has reached us by chains of narration, mutawatib, numerous, to show us the authenticity of it. And it is a challenge for mankind to produce something like it. Some of the names of the word Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the book itself is the first and foremost is the Qur'an. That's the most popular name. The second is Al-Kitab, the book. And this is often referenced in the Qur'an. Another of the names of the Qur'an is Al-Furqan, the criterion, that which you decide between that which is, you, you use it as a criteria for evaluating and judging things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references the Qur'an as well as a dhikr That we have sent down this dhikr that which is remembrance or remembered. Also that which is tanzil, which has been sent down and revealed. Al-Burhan, that which is clear and manifest in its light. Al-Shifa, that which is a cure. So the Qur'an is not only a spiritual cure, but we also believe it is a physical cure as well for us. 
The Quran is called Al Huda, guidance. And these are just some of the names of the word Quran, <clears throat> or the different names of the Quran. As we look through the history of the Prophet وسلم, the Quran was sent down over a period of 23 years. This was the final stage of revelation. But there were two stages of revelation of the Quran before this. The first stage of revelation of the Quran is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of creation. The first thing He created was the pen. And He said to the pen, write. And then that's why we, we have Surah Al-Qalam for instance. That's, uh, so the pen says, what should I write? Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write everything that will happen from now till the end of time. Okay, the destiny of all things until the day of judgment. This is what we call al lawh al mahfuz Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references this at the end of Surah Al-Buruj. Fi lawh mahfuz Okay. So everything was written at that time. So that includes the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. The second revelation of the Qur'an is from al lawh al mahfuz from the preserved tablet to the lowest heaven. So there is a Kaaba, Bayt al Ma'mur, in Jannah. The hadith of the Prophet وسلم, says that there is a house that the angels visit, 70,000 angels visit this masjid in, in, in Jannah, if you will, this Kaaba, if you will. Every single day, a new 70,000 angels visit. So the Quran is revealed to the lowest heaven, and then from the lowest heaven, over 23 years to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala send the Qur'an down over 23 years? There are many benefits that we can learn from this. So for instance, previous revelations, like for instance, were sent down to Musa Alayhi Salam all at once. You know, certain revelations were sent down all at once. But the Qur'an over the course of 23 years, Number one, to help the Prophet ﷺ be firm in his resolve against the disbelievers. Every time he would try to preach, they would come and insult him, etc., etc., and the Qur'an would come down and console him and re-energize him. Also, to help in its memorization and understanding. It's much easier to understand and to memorize the Qur'an over a longer period of time. And so for the companions, it was much easier for them to understand the Qur'an and to live and to adapt to it. Imagine, as soon as revelation came down, as soon as Islam began, all of the Qur'an is sent down with all of its rules and its laws. It would be very, very difficult for the people. Also, another benefit we get from this is to prove the truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ. Because oftentimes the Quraysh or the disbelievers would come to him and challenge him with questions. And so then after this, Allah ﷻ would send down the answer in the form of the Qur'an. But if the Qur'an was revealed all at once, this would not be possible. This also proves the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. If this book over 23 years is being sent down, if it had been from anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would have many errors and mistakes. If this man named Muhammad had just decided to make this Qur'an up, over the course of 23 years, he would have made mistakes. He would not have remembered what he said 17 years ago, for instance. So it would have been very difficult. And there would be mistakes and problems and errors. And you said this here, but then you said that 17 years ago. How come they don't make sense? But no, the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And over the course of 23 years, there's not one mistake, not one grammatical error, not one contradiction found inside of it. So this shows the miracle of the Quran. When we look at the Qur'an, it's important the scholars distinguish the Qur'an into two different periods of time. You have the Qur'an, what we call the Makki revelation. So the Qur'an that is revealed while the Prophet is living in Mecca. And there's a clear distinguish, a distinction between the eloquence, not the eloquence, but the... Uh, 
the themes of that revelation versus the themes of revelation coming down while the Prophet ﷺ is living in Medina. So for the first 13 years, the Qur'an focuses on issues while the Muslims are the minority in their region. But once they do hijrah to Medina, once the Prophet ﷺ moves from Mecca to Medina, and now they are a nation state, now they have many different factors going on in their Muslim community, so the themes of revelation coming down at that time are going to be different. Because the situation of the Muslims and the believers are completely different. And this is a blessing for us as Muslims in 2023. Because we have the ability as people who are a minority to look at the Qur'an that's revealed to when the Prophet was living as a minority and we can take and extract those blessings and those lessons directly to our situation. They fall in line very much. But then those who live in Muslim majority countries where Islam is the majority, they can draw more parallels to the Medinan state, for instance. So, for example, the themes of revelation. Early on in Islam, the main themes of revelation were emphasizing belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Islamic aqidah, belief system, theology. So believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in the day of judgment, right? Building on the iman of the person. We also have the themes of major themes of revelation in the early period of Islam where the majority of the stories revealed were sent down at that time. And that's to help the Muslim community have hope and light at the end of the tunnel because they're going through very difficult, perse difficult persecution just like the prophets in the past. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down this revelation to show them that this is normal, this has happened before, and it's going to happen to you. And this is how they dealt with it, and this is how you can deal with it. And we also have a major theme of this early revelation, is the moral compass. Focusing on morality, being ethical, having good adab. So, treating women right, treating the poor and the orphans and the needy. So a lot of the verses that deal with how to deal with the people in an ethical, in a moral manner, being a good person, is of emphasis. So, the stories of the previous prophets and the generations, moral lessons, belief system, right, having that iman, and then of course the focus on tawheed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the four major themes of early revelation. When it comes to early revelation, there's also a stylistic difference as well. So the Qur'an has, that's revealed early on in Mecca has shorter verses, more rhythm and tune. But then when we look at the verses of Medina, they're going to be a little bit longer. They're not going to have as much of a rhythmic, fast-paced tune, if you will. So a majority of Juz Amma, for instance, is revealed in Mecca. But then the longer surahs, these are, are revealed in Medina. So some of the themes of revelation in Medina. The perfection of the rules of worship and rituals. So for example, the detailed laws of Salah. These are revealed in Medina. In Mecca, they prayed, but they didn't have the rules of praying five times a day, for instance, early on. This came after Isra and Mi'raj, as we know. And Isra and Mi'raj is, you know, 11, 12 years after the revelation began. The rules of sadaqah, the rules of fasting and charity and hajj, all this stuff comes down later on in Medina. The establishment of a legal system. So while they're the minority in Mecca, they don't run the court system and the legal system. But now in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ is the ruler. And as a ruler, they had to have an establishment of laws and a civil and a court system. Right? If somebody steals something from this person, this is how you go to court. In Mecca, they don't have that. They're not the majority. They can't run the courts in Mecca. But in Medina, they can. In Mecca, the verses revealed 
came down to the disbelievers at that time were the mushrikun, the polytheists, the idol worshippers. But now in Medina, the disbelievers of Medina are the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christian. So the, raw, the, the laws pertaining to the Jews and the Christians from a Muslim perspective. And the revelation sent down to them is going to sound and look different because it's a different people. So any verses that come discussing the people of the book, these are verses revealed after the Prophet moves to Medina. And also you have the concept of the hypocrites where you didn't have hypocrites in Mecca. Hypocrite is the person who says they are Muslim for social benefit. In Mecca, there is no social or financial benefit of pretending to be Muslim. Because the Muslims as a whole were persecuted against. But now in Medina, the Muslims have the upper hand. They're the ones that run that area. And so now, there's a lot of social and financial benefit to pretending to be Muslim. In the marketplace, in the streets, in the community, etc. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes the hypocrites. These are people who pretend to be Muslim, and yet they themselves, they don't actually like Islam, they hate Islam. They hate the Prophet, they hate the Muslims. But they're just doing it to get their own greedy, personal benefit. So these are just a little, this is just a little bit of a background information about approaching the study of the Qur'an.